keeping it on on that positivity, on that good momentum, on that good knowledge, that good truth. We got the brothers, man. We got the brothers in the building tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They got the beautiful tees on. Everybody's rocking the tees. And, yo, it's unity, man. It's love. It's power. That's yes, what sir. it is. Israel united in Christ. We're going to talk to these brothers in just a second. So that's what's up, y'all. We're going to talk some, some truth right now. Let's get into the real, real, real business and the real knowledge here. We're going to introduce our guest this evening. We got Officer Tavaya. We got Shermer. He's an officer as well. An officer, you want to tan. So we're gonna come in here and we're yes, gonna do sir. this right, y'all. Yes, sir. How are you doing? How I'm you doing, doing well, man. Night. Shalom, happy Sabbath to everybody. Good to be here. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shalom, shalom. It's like a bless. Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you for having us. You're very, very welcome, man. Thanks for being here. Israel united in Christ. Big, yes, big sir. name. Big, big movement, and just something that is it, just known and, and necessary to be known if you don't know about it yet so yes 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 so um israel united in christ is a faith-based movement mm -hmm. uh, founded in 2003 under our leadership bishop nathaniel we also have bishop yawasaf and bishop kanai mm -hmm. so they've been you know spreading that knowledge giving us the wisdom and understanding of the scriptures of bringing so-called blacks and hispanics back to the true heritage back to the laws of who we really are according to the bible Right. Not just known as so-called blacks, Hispanics, but the Israelites that we've been hearing about when we read from Genesis to Revelation. Wow. So we're spreading throughout the four corners of the earth. We're in the, we're in the islands. We're here in Canada, uh, Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa, Edmonton. We're, you know, overseas in Europe, London, and in Africa. So this is something that's spreading throughout the four corners of the earth. This is... Bible prophecy being fulfilled. See, I don't know. That's what's going on. Yes, sir. So how did how, how did this form? The brother, you got you got you got a few people in the building today. How how did you brothers kind of connect and form? Was it through this this movement? Was it before that where y'all connected and said that let's just move as one right now and let's just get this together? How did that all come together? Yeah, it was all of us individually having that journey, looking for knowledge, looking for understanding, and agreeing with what we were learning from Israel United in Christ which made us, you know, dedicate ourselves to be a part of the movement. And then we end up, you know, we met each other being online, and from there we came together. So, you know, it's good to see even the growth that's happened over time from the time when it was maybe just like five of us, a couple of us. I know us three, we've been in the, we've been for the, uh, talking for like at least about <laughs> 10 years, but like, about at least nine, 10 years we've been talking, uh -huh. we've been doing this, so... You know, and just realizing and realizing and waking up and, and learning and just spreading, spreading the good news, yes, spreading yes. the, the knowledge. Yes, yes, spreading the truth, you know, it can be difficult because, you know, a lot of times people, they don't, they don't uh, take well to change, right? Right. But the Bible is all about change, especially with all the things that we've been taught, contrary to what the Bible is saying, we got to re-educate ourselves and that's always a challenge, you know? Right. And I think it goes back to just how we, how we grew up, just reading books understanding, learning from books, learning from research. You right. know, we had to, it wasn't no Google and, and just quick, quick things. You had to go in encyclopedias and understand how to look up an encyclopedia and find your knowledge and find your details. So I'm just glad you brothers came here tonight because we're going to get some knowledge right now. Yes. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start that vibe right now. We're going to have Officer Shemmer. We're going to do some reading here for y'all and let him just drop some, some real knowledge, some facts for the people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, um, I would want to start... Uh, definitely, we're Romans 15 and 4. Okay. All right, because people look at the Bible as just, uh, you know, some people don't even believe in the Bible, right? You know, mm -hmm. everybody is, has the right to choose what they want, but this is not just a book of religion like how, you know, we're being told. This is our history. This is our heritage. Right. This is showing us how we're supposed to conduct ourselves to get back in alignment with the God and in in how we're supposed to be on this earth among, you know, the other nations, right? where we've been destroyed and now we're following whatever we want to follow. That's it. But now we, we turn back to the Bible and we're reading it and understanding what we're supposed to do. So I'm just going to, you know, show you how important it is for us to be That's reading the scriptures. So let me get there to Romans uh, 15 or 4. Go ahead. Book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So everything in this Bible, mm -hmm. what people don't understand, everything that's in here is for us to learn. We can see the example of, you know, what our forefathers did, whether it was good or bad, to show us, yes, we follow that good example, we don't follow the bad example. Right. And you can even see that in life, you know. You've grown, you grown up, they always say, 
the wise people are the ones that can learn from the mistakes of others. You know what I mean? Like for myself, you know, I might have been around a, a, a tougher crowd where people were caught up in a lot of stuff, but I didn't get pulled into the same thing because I can learn from the mistakes that some people do. Some people have that ability. So likewise, we're looking at the scriptures and we're seeing things that our forefathers was doing. We're seeing things that they were doing that was against God and how he, they were punished. So we said, no, nah, I'm not going to follow that. But the things where there was reward, where there was blessings, we want to follow those things. So keeping the laws and, and just spreading the truth and being that positive example. I'll read that again from the top. For the, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Mm -hmm. Now we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Right, because we got to be patient in this crazy world and, and still, you know, endure hardness. And the scriptures is what's going to give us comfort because people might not think anything comes after this, but there is something that's coming after, you yeah, know? That's right. There is, a, there is a time for us to actually feel relieved of all the hardships that we've been through. So that's what we're pushing. You know, we want our people to understand that this Bible is the, the most controversial book and the most powerful book on the planet. In, conf in full confidence, I can say that because I've taken up this Bible and put it down many times throughout my life, not understanding what mm -hmm. was going on, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to be educated by men of understanding mm -hmm. to, re right. to really know what's going on. If you just read it for yourself, you might pick up on certain things, but a lot of it, you won't get the bigger picture, right? So you have to see seasoned men that will be able to educate you on that. You know what I mean? So. With that being said, I want to get um, Psalms 111, just to show you right. an, a quick example of how you're supposed to learn and what, what keys you have to apply for you to learn this Bible. The book of Psalms, chapter one, 111, verse 10. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right? That's the first thing we have to always establish. Because you know some people say, I don't fear no one but God. Mm -hmm. You hear that a lot. That's right. Right? But if you don't fear no one but God you got to actually say, okay, God can kill me at any time for me not obeying any of the laws that he's given me. When you, you can program yourself to do that, you'll, be, you'll feel more pushed to be in line with what, he, what he's commanding. But some people say that, yeah, I don't fear no one but God, but right. they'll fear the man that will run up on them and, you know, you know, try to rob them or whatever, more so than what the Most High can do, which he can do far worse, right? Yeah, that's right. So go ahead, read that again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That's the key right yeah. there. It said a good understanding, good understanding have all they that are going to do what? That keep his commandments. You know, and that, that opens the door for much controversy, right? Because if we look at a lot of different denominations, a lot of different beliefs, a lot of people are saying the laws of God are done away with. We don't have to keep God's laws no more. Mm -hmm. But guess what? We've been misinformed. Now we're realizing we still have to keep God's laws. And that's why we don't, you know, we don't understand the Bible the way we're supposed to. Because the more you keep the laws and apply it and do the work of trying to wake up others, the more your spiritual eye can now see what's going that's on right. in Scripture. So there's, right. there's another aspect to it. You see what I mean? So this is something that we're trying to uh, re-educate our people with to make them see and understand that, hey, this is not nothing regular. And just to see how this thing is spreading throughout the earth in all these different countries, yeah. this is Bible prophecy of us waking up. Mm. When you hear about the scripture of the, the valley of the dry bones, you know, that was, that's us as a, as a nation. That's right. Now we're starting to now come back to life because we're understanding who we are, and now we're turning back to the Bible because look at everything that's going on. Look at all the black-on-black -black violence. Look at the way how we're being mistreated in all these different places, killed by the police all these people that's been slaughtered and, and yeah. the residential schools with the natives, yeah, yeah. we've seen a lot. It's right? one thing after another and it ain't stopping, as we see. And then we're looking for solutions. And as we try to apply different things, we, oh, we said we're going to march. That didn't help us. You know, the time to try to fight back. That didn't help because we can't fight back against our oppressors. They're, they're, right, right. they're over us. So what do we have to do? Turn back to God. Keep God's commandments. And once we do that now, then... We don't have to fight our battles. The Most High God will fight our battles for us. No, no, right? No. So this is something that we need to understand. And it's going to take a lot of time because, you know, we're sick people, right? So we gotta re we got to uh, 
heal ourselves with the word of God. Yeah. Right? So that's the challenge in it all. And come back stronger. Right, right. So it, 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 it seems and it sounds like it's, 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 it's different steps to this. There's different... Right, it's a journey. But it's big. Like you said, it's a journey. It's, it's big. Where does, where does one start that has no clue where to start? I, I think that's, especially for the listeners and for people out there, I think that's a big question that's going to come up to the where, where do I even do step one? Or how do I, what does that look like? So, you know what, can you get um, Jose at four and six? So what I will say, mm -hmm. we have to understand that we've been destroyed. Right. We have to understand that we've been, you know, our history has been taken away from us. Right. So accept when, that, understand that. And, and yes, and then then you gotta look at okay, why did these things happen? Right. And once you start to piece those puzzles together, then now you can see uh, you can see the solution, and then you can ask yourself, how come nobody has done this as yet? You know, as a, or as a large group, you know, it's really just happening now. You don't see a lot of people looking and really trying to find solution in the scriptures, right? So uh, first thing, I will, I'll, I'll bring this up just to mm -hmm. put this in people's head to understand that we've been destroyed. So go ahead, Hosea. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lot, for lack of knowledge. And that's it right there. Where we've been destroyed for lack of knowledge. We don't understand who we are. We don't understand what this Bible really represents because when you look at it, you hear about the transatlantic slave trade where we was brought from Africa and from Europe and from different places to the Caribbean, to America and to the different countries. Mm -hmm. We only know the history, our history as far as that goes. That's right. But we don't understand what happened, why did that happen, right. and you know, who were we before that's we right. came over to this How did it get to that? Yes, yeah. exactly. And that's where and the Bible fills the gap in. That's yeah. what people didn't know and didn't understand. The Bible had the solutions all along. All right, read that one more time. My people are destroyed for for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So you see, so God is getting to a point, okay, you're rejecting knowledge, you're rejecting obeying and following me, all right, so I'm going to reject you as well. That's why we're not at the top. That's why we're, we're chosen by the Most High to be a special people. But because we don't obey, he said, okay, you're not going to be at the top, you're going to be at the bottom. Now you're going to serve the other nations. Now you're going to be the, the last hired and the first fired. And, and this is what's happening. You know, when you look at it, it's clear as day. Yeah. Right? So he said, I will also reject thee. I will also reject thee, uh -huh. that thou shalt be no priest to me. Right. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Right. That's what we forgot. We forgot about keeping God's law of the heritage. Because we brought over here in slavery. Now we're living where assimilated to the ways of the, the, right. the, the world, That's you know, right. society. But we were always set apart to live, a, we were being called to live a different life. You know, if you look at uh, religions, you know, um, the Hindu, um, Islam, so on and so forth, a lot of, they're dedicated, you know, they're committed to whatever the laws and whatever rules that they have with those religions, right. you know what I mean? So it's, it shouldn't be uh, shocking to see that we have something that is set apart and different from everybody else as well too, you know. But we just gotta re-educate ourselves to know that and understand it. We are continuing the conversation, which is a great one so far. Israel united in Christ. We got the brothers in the building right now, and uh, Officer Tawaya is just really breaking down some stuff for us, man. So we left on that point, but we gotta understand. Right, right. right. Let's let's bring it back there. I think that that's a that's a huge point and a huge part of where the impact starts and where the change can, can begin as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what, you know, with us understanding who we are and knowing what's going on, then we can look forward to good things. You know, we mm -hmm. can start to put our life back in the right order. You know, um, there's so many things that we can bring out. Um, you know, let me get Jeremiah 16 because we, we actually, you know what, instead of that, um, Let's get, uh, you know what, Jeremiah 16, let's go there. I, I was going to bring some up first, but you know what? I want you to understand something because if you know history, mm -hmm. um, if you know the Bible, you hear about Moses delivering <coughs> the Israelites out of Egypt, right? That was one of the greatest, you know, that was the greatest thing that we can speak right. on. They, they, you know, every day they, they remind us, we know about it all the time growing up. 
Now, there's something that's going to come in the near future, Lord, as well, that's going to be another deliverance. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's going to give us hope, something to look forward to. So something that's been overlooked, but we got we to gotta see what the scripture says about it and see, okay, do I want to see this happen and what is it going to take for me to get there? Um, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, say the Lord, that it shall no more be said that the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. All right, so he say, hey, there's going to come a time where... We're not going to be talking about mm. how the Most High God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses opened up the Red Sea and they walked on dry ground across it and they went into the Promised Land. We're not going to hear about that no more, yeah. but the, the question is why. Read on. Verse 15. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. From where? From the land of the north. So he's from the land of the north. You know, uh, you know I'm from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Now... I know if you know here following with the the basketball scene, you know the Toronto Raptors. They be saying we the North, yeah, that's right. right? But that right there when it said the land of the North, that's referring to North America. Right. right. So read that one more time. Verse fifteen. But the Lord liveth that, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the North. So there's gonna come a time that the Most High God is gonna be delivering the children of Israel out of. North America. That's that's something big right there. That's that we, right. That's we have right. to say, wait, hold on. Let me think about what's that. Going yeah, what's there. going on there? From the land of the north, where else? And from all the lands whither he had driven them. Right. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. And that's what's going to be happening. We're going to be brought back to the promised land. But how we know this if we don't open the Bible and read, right? Mm -hmm. We have to read for ourselves. They say, hey, you know, just like we have the historical books to bring out some more uh, truth and understanding on what's going on. They say if you want to hide something from a black man, they put it uh, put it in a book, right? You you know that saying. Yeah, I heard that saying. And, and sure. this is why we have to take the time. And that's horrible. You know, step away from the social media and the, yeah. all the computers and the tablets and stuff. And we got to start finding a lot of this literature and start seeing that... The truth is out there. If you're really trying to look for it and yeah, you do the right research, right. there's many scholars, and not just black scholars, scholars of other nations and so on, that are confirming that we are the people of the Bible. But, you know, we got to take the, we got to do the research, yeah. and we got to make the change as well. So even if we know, we might know we're the people, but if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, you know, hey, everything continues. You know, we're still going to continue here in captivity. So, one more other thing I wanted to bring was up Isaiah 11 and 11 to tie in with us being delivered. Because knowing that we're going to be delivered, now you got to ask a question: <laughs> What do I? What do I? Gonna, what do I have to do to be That's right. among that? Right? That's right. Yeah. Because is it going to just be everybody? That's the question. Or is it going to be only a particular yeah, group of people? So what do I got to do? Right? So this is, the thing, this is where we have to take that next step and start looking and examining ourselves to say, what's going on? What do I need to do? So go ahead. The book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. So that's the second time. Mm -hmm. We know about the first time when he, when he did it in Egypt. That's right. Go on. Which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, right. and from Pathos, and from Cush, right. and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And from where? And from the islands of the sea. I want to highlight that part right there because a lot of us over here in North America, if we're not from America, the United States, a lot of us uh, came from the islands. That's right. Right? Whether it be Jamaica, Trinidad, yeah. Haiti... Uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So it said from the islands of the sea. And we know <laughs> when you hear the islands of the sea, that there's only a certain group of people that's over there. It's <laughs> that's mainly right. blacks and it's blacks and Hispanics. That's true. Right? Yeah. And then we're going to be delivered. But what is it? what do we need to do to achieve that, right? Get Acts uh, 3 and 19. So we have to say now, okay, I understand. Okay, you're going to deliver us. What is, what is response? What's my responsibility now for me to now be among those that are going to be delivered. 
this is, this is a major thing. We need to understand, are we going to be the blessed or what's going to happen? Yeah. You know, and then and there's so much more we can bring up, but, you know, I like the dialogue of just having that conversation. Exactly. So we can, you know, kind of touch on whatever things that, you know, you might be questioning or thinking about. But go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be be converted. This is what it's, this is what it's going to take. It's going to take for us to repent and to be converted, meaning to change. Go on. That your sins may be blotted out. Right. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. All right, read that again. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. And be converted. And be converted. What? So we have to question, okay, what do we have to do to convert? What's going to convert us? Yeah. Get, hold that and get Psalms 19.7 quick. And then we're going to go back to that. And this is a, a, another uh, way for us to learn the Bible. It, it said precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Okay. So for you to understand some stuff in the New Testament, you got to go back to certain things in the Absolutely. Old Testament Absolutely. to get, you know, there's a, it's a puzzle aspect to the Bible right. for you to open, to open your spiritual eyes to see the answers, to understand a lot of the mysteries. So um, Psalms, was it 19 or 7? Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect. perfect. That's what's going to convert us. So when it said repent and be ye perfect, that you're going to be converted, that means that you got to keep the laws. Read that one more time. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Right, so someone that might be seen as simple now becomes wise because they're keeping God's laws, because they're applying what this Bible is saying. Now you can go back to... Um, Acts. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent ye therefore and be converted, which ties into keeping God's laws. That's what repentance is. Repenting is putting away the sinful life yeah. and applying the laws of the Messiah. So the connection. Boom. Repent and keep God's laws that you're going to change and be converted. Go on. That your sins may be blotted out. And your sins, your past sins will be blotted out because now you're starting a new life. Now you're, sure. you're, now you're being spiritually born again, per se. Go on. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Right. When the time, when the Mosai, like we are saying, when he came to uh, deliver the Israelites from the land of the north or from the islands of the sea, you'll be among that. But you got to repent and be converted first. You know, if you don't do that, then now we're going to have a problem. Then that's going to lead right back to <laughs> this punishment. Right, right? Exactly. Right back to the punishment. So, uh, a couple more scriptures. I don't want to be long-winded. Um, let's get, was it Zechariah? About the two-thirds? The 13 and 8? 13 and 8. Let's get that. Because this right here is going to tell us what exactly what's going to happen. Okay. Zechariah 13 and 8. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So in that last day, it's saying two parts, so two thirds of our people are going to be cut off and they're going to they're going to perish, they're going to die. This is a harsh reality. So this should be the motivation to make sure that I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm going to be of the one third because I know that two thirds ain't going to make it. That's right. So it's not, I'm just going to sit back and God knows my heart. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, all these type of things that we're being taught. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, we, we have love for our people that are in the churches. We have love for our people that are, that are um highly devoted, you know what I'm saying, to these different denominations and religions. Is we do what we have a problem with is the doctrine and, and the the false information that has been planted in their minds. Right, yeah, you know? Sure. So we're just trying to re educate and give them true love, which is showing them the laws because we're really trying to save souls. Whereas a lot of these places is just keeping them buying time. You mm -hmm. know? You it's like you're on a prison sent you have the death sentence, but you're on a prison sentence just sitting in the cell waiting for that death sentence, you know? We're trying to override that and give them a solution where they can make their, uh, they can right their wrongs. So read that one more time. And Two parts. the book of Zechariah chapter 13 verse, not, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, save the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Right. 
but the third shall be left therein. But the third shall be left therein. One third is going to be saved. One third is not going to get destroyed. Go on. Verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will bring the third part where? Through the fire. I will bring the third part through the fire. Why do you th I'm asking you, why do you think you're saying through the fire? What do you think might be happening? Something not, something not too good, man. Something not too good. I'm asking for a reason because... <laughs> You know, we hear about a lot of things. You know what they say? They hear about wars and rumors of wars. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's why I'm, I'm asking you what do you think when I said that one-third is going to be brought through the fire. That through the fire, that's the fire that they're talking about is talking about them. You hear about the nuclear bombs. Right. Nuclear destruction. You ever seen, um, was it Terminator 2? Mm -hmm. Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Mm-hmm. Keyword judgment day. That's right. Right? And there's that one scene where uh what's her name? Sarah Connor. Yeah. Where she she's having she's a dream. Bomb. Yeah. And, and she saw the, and the thing. bomb the yeah. bomb she drops and everybody thing. burns. Yeah. That fire right there, that's that fire that it's referring to. You know, and, and we have a lot of scriptures to support that. Um I don't want to be too long winded, but I wanna I'm doing this so you can just see no, this is this From is perfect distance. how you're doing it because it's really breaking down for people listening how the step what the steps are to take and how to, how to how to get into this right and right. how to start doing research and how to be curious and how to jump from part to part right right so, and like I said and the reason why I'm touching on these things is not to uh, uh, punish nobody or not to put not to have people afraid for their life but to fear God which will maybe provoke them to good works that's right you know you that's know what I'm right. saying so. Like I said earlier, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you have that fear, if you're fearful like right now hearing this, then that's a good thing. Yeah. Because that means that you care, yeah. you know, and something inside you. Something's burning now. Yeah, yeah something, something inside you, it, it, re it resonates with your spirit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't want to leave that part there. Don't leave that part because it gets good. <laughs> read, uh, go from, read from 9 again. Verse 9, and I will bring the third part through the fire. And then bring the third part through the fire. So fire is burning, but the third, with a one third, for some reason, it's not affecting them. So he's gonna bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, uh -huh. and will try them as gold is tried. Right. So being tested, go through trials. Go on. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. Right. So then, and after that, we'll have that communication back with the Most High as our forefathers did in the scriptures. Go on. I will say, it is my people, and I will, s and they shall say, the Lord is my God. The Lord is my right. God. This is what we're trying, this is, this yeah. is, that's the level, that's the goal we're trying to get to. Right. Bringing back that unity and that relationship between the Israelites as a nation with the Most High God. But we've lost that because of the sin, because of our choice to not do the research, to not, you know, go against the grain and fear God instead of fearing man or fearing the world or fearing being hated or, you know, yeah, any of that. all of that stuff, right? Yeah. So that's why we, you know, in Israel United in Christ, we, we don't care what anybody has to say because we understand what this Bible is trying to show us. We yeah. understand what God is trying to show us. So we've lost friends. You, you lose family. You know, you people have lost jobs. All these things, all because we want to obey this Bible and keep God's laws, mm -hmm. not doing no evil, you know, mm -hmm. not not mistreating nobody, you know, not doing any of these things. So it, it kind of shows you, it lets you see really that this has to be, you know, the same reason like how they killed Christ. Right. Christ didn't do no evil, no. but they, they found fault, they, they forced fault on him and got him crucified. Yeah. So just like Christ went through it, we got to go through it, right? So Man. we can, you can feel it. You can feel it. You know what I mean. So we 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 just trying to push to get people to understand, you know, with that urgency how important it is for us to turn back. You know, you know, take that time to sit down and really try to study, examine yourself, and learn and reeducate as far as what the Bible is saying and and what is required of you. You know what I mean. So I want to give um, um, Officer one of time a chance to speak on the the, the books and the, the literature and yes, the importance sir. of that. So thank you for being here again, brother. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We do appreciate it. Uh, I want to go back to something that you said in the beginning. You said, you know, how did we 
you know, come together. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Give me Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16 real quick. If it wasn't for this Bible, I wouldn't know Taviah. I wouldn't know uh, Officer Shem. I wouldn't know none of these brothers. You know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. just from my personal walk, like, all of us, you know, we pretty much, you know, grew up Christian. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We brought up, you know, in Christian households, you know, whether it be different denominations or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Like me, I veered off from the church because I, I, I couldn't relate to it. You know what I'm saying? Then after that, I went to Islam. And then what really caught my ears in terms of this Bible, because I, I used to say, man, this Bible ain't got nothing to do with black people. You know what I'm saying? That's right. what they used to enslave us right. as the white man's book. I used to say all, all these, you know, those ignorant statements. But then there was something that I heard out of the Bible that we're going to touch. And I was like, I couldn't refute that. You know what I'm saying? In terms of like how it relates to our history. Read that real quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Mm. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. The Bible says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord, which is the Bible. And do what? And read. And read. Go ahead. None, no, no one of these shall fail. Now, just uh, you know, just something pertaining to history. Seek yeah. ye out of the book of the Lord and read. When we were in slavery, could we read? We could. But nah, the, the well, slaves, the some, slaves I'm talking about. No, but some, even the ones that did learn a little one too, mm. that was that was looked at as, as very bad. You, you can't be reading. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. They're, they're learning now. That can't be happening. Well, it, when they were allowed to read. The slave master would pretty much dictate what is it that you can read, right. what is it that you cannot read. You understand? Which is something that I got. I'll just start with this one first, right? We here I got. It's called the Negro Bible. You understand? It's pretty much the slave the slave Bible. Select parts of the Bible for the use of the Negro slaves of the British West Indian Islands, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm not going to go, you know, into it like as far as like I have more some. More good stuff, you know what I'm saying, to right, show you. Right. But our understanding of the Bible today is still the same understanding that our forefathers and foremothers right. received when they were on the plantation. You understand? If you had a, a, a Negro, so called Negro preacher, mm -hmm. that the slave master would allow to, you know, rise to prominence, the Negro preacher would, would be supervised by the slave master to make sure that he's not teaching anything other than what has been prescribed to keep the Negroes as slaves. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, finish that. I read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Uh -huh. No one of these shall fail. So none of the prophecies that's written in the Bible are going to fail. Everything that's, that's been, for example, God prophesied that the children of Israel were going to slavery. Did that happen? We went into slavery. We want to read it. Yeah. God said that the children of Israel will have yokes of iron on their necks, mm. shackles at their feet. Did it happen? Yes, it happened. Yeah. And he also predicted that the same way the children of Israel went into slavery, they were going to be delivered out of slavery. Just like in the time of Moses. Just all, all the beautiful scriptures that also to I read, all these things are going to happen. And that's why in these last days, our people need to wake up and understand who they are in the Bible. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Go ahead. None shall want her mate. Meaning you can't mate the prophecies written in this Bible. You can't mate that with the book of the dead, Egyptian, uh, Egyptian books, uh, the Quran. No, this book stands in its own category alone. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Go ahead. None shall want her mate. For my mouth, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. So God's, God's mouth commanded these words. To be spoken in the Bible through the prophets and his spirit. His spirit is, the, like I said, if it weren't for this Bible, I wouldn't know any of these brothers. Right. You understand what I'm saying? We will know each other. That's deep right there. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all came. Look, look what it brought together. Bruh. We all came from different walks of life. You understand? Know like, all kinds of different walks of life. And we came together based on what understanding? That we are the children of Israel. Now, watch this. Go to, let's, uh, where do I want to start? Go to Deuteronomy 20, 28, verse 68. Let's, let's, let's do it right there. The children of Israel are black, have always been black, will always be black. That's right. When, you think, when you're thinking about the children of Israel, Period. the first thing that comes to your mind is Caucasians, Europeans, right. so-called Jewish, 
who lives in the land of Israel today. You understand what I'm saying? But there's a history about that. That's right. There's a history that, that there's paper trails. You know what I'm saying? Like there's things that we have to go back to that's actually written in this Bible. This is one of them. What what I asked you to get? I said verse 68. Yeah. Give me verse 48 first. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. That therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee. This is what God gave to Moses. We came out of Egypt. God delivered us out of Egypt. He made a contract with us. He said, if you keep my commandments, I'm going to bless you. You're going to be on high. Mm. Above all nations of the earth. Mm. The nations will take orders from you. You're going to keep my laws. You're going to show these nations how to keep God's laws. We were supposed to govern the whole earth. If we honored our part That's of the right. contract. But then God said what? If we disobey him, then he was going to give us curses. Now, these curses, that's what you need today to identify who are the children of Israel today. So what are going to, we're going to read right now, you tell me, who does that identify? Does that identify so-called Europeans, Caucasians that say that they're Jewish? Or does that identify the so-called Negroes in Montreal, the so-called Jamaicans, anywhere, Haitians, right, anywhere. scattered throughout, throughout, throughout the earth? Read that. Uh, 68? 48, 48. 48. The book of, uh, okay, chapter 48, uh, verse 48. Therefore, sh therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So God said we have to serve our enemies for food. Do we control Maxi, Metro, uh, Provigo, uh, Super... Do we control any of those? No. no. We have to work. We have to serve our enemies in order to get basic groceries. Food. Go ahead. And in thirst. In thirst. If you want water. If you, do you control Hydro Hydro Quebec? Do we control that? <laughs> we, don't, we, don't. we don't control that. No, you understand what I'm saying? If, if you don't pay your your, uh, your water bill, what happens to it? You got no water. They shut it off. Yeah. We have no water. control over it. Go ahead. And in nakedness, uh, clothes. You look at the back of your uh, your tag on your clothes. Where are clothes made? Do we do we have uh, 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 textiles. textiles? You know, say so like uh, places where we manufacture and make textiles and make our own clothes. No, no. we have to go to the other nations for that. Go ahead. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. Anything we want. Education, death certificate, birth certificate, driver's license, anything that you need. Do you, do you have, do you, uh, alone? Do we have black banks? I know we do have, you know, uh, some black banks. I know what you mean, though, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, don't but, really have, black, yeah. Yeah. In, in a uh, major, majority, guess what? We depend on our enemies. God said our enemies. You shall serve your enemies for the one. Finish that? Sorry, for the one. Read that again. And in want of all things. Meaning anything we need. We were supposed to go to God and God will be the one providing for us. But because we turn our back on him, he turned our back. He turned his back on us and he said, y'all going to serve your enemies. Yeah. They're they going to provide for you. And watch this. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. God said our enemies will put yokes of iron upon our necks. Go ahead. Until he have destroyed thee. That's a very important stipulation. Until he Until, have destroyed right. thee. Meaning what? If you have a dog. Just, we, we always give that analogy. Let's say you have a dog, right? The dog is acting wild. You put the dog on a leash. Until you train the dog's mind. Right. When the mind is trained, what can you do then? <laughs> Remove the leash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. His, his, his mind is trained. So the only reason why you don't see us walking around with yokes of iron on our necks anymore is because spiritually and mentally we've been destroyed. Mm. You understand? And one of the reasons, one of the ways that they've used to keep us destroyed, to keep us destroyed, is by giving us false interpretations, false doctrines, and they would use the Bible. Like I said, like you know, like I showed you, the, the Negro Bible. You understand what I'm saying? The, some of the understanding that we have today. In the Christian church, as far as our people, black people, yeah. is the same understanding that we had when we were slaves. Christ is white. The angels are white. Then when we come to show our people, wait, we can show you in the Bible. It's black people in the Bible. God, color don't matter. Right. Slave mind. Slave mentality. You understand what I'm saying? So, read that. Uh, sorry. Uh, you finish that? Yeah. Okay, go to 68. So, so far, my brothers, I mean, very, very good conversation. Even for me, it's, it's very, like... Enlightened, it's like man, the, the, the little and you only want to look, you only tip the iceberg right now, Scratch right? The tip of the iceberg right now. Yeah. Like, just that alone, though, has has opened so many different things and raising a lot of questions. You know what I mean? Right. One question I do have for you guys: How how do you feel about 
the black community? Do you find you guys being out there, you guys trying to spread this good message, spread this knowledge and truth, do you find us being more accepted now? Do you find people uh, are more open? Or, or is it still like, uh, I'm not sure about this. What are you guys talking it's, about? It's definitely improved. It's definitely grown um, with stuff like COVID happening. Right. With, you know, all the things that's been going on in the, you know, with the, the, the police brutality in the yeah. states. A lot of these things playing a big part in having people really sit back and really question you know, why I mean, is this happening to right. us? What did we do to deserve yeah. this type of treatment? So, yeah. you know, it's becoming easier for a lot of people to really look and say, okay, something's wrong with the world. Yeah. And let me start, you know, trying to find some knowledge and get some understanding. So we've seen a lot, um, a lot more people receptive and a lot of people contacting us, wanting to come, you know, they watch yeah. it. A lot of people are watching it already because, you know, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on all these different outlets. So people are now trying to learn, you know, seeing that, hey, this world is, you know, is, is going in a, a negative direction. So, you know, it's been better. I'll say it's been better. That's good. That's We're going to always, you know, there's a, you've got to take the good with the bad. Of course, always. of course. But I feel like there's been an increase in those that are actually willing and wanting to learn and asking the questions and doing the research. That's what's up, man. Yeah. So you guys mentioned earlier that you guys met through the Bible, through, through this movement. So how does someone get in with you guys? How does someone actually come and start learning and start getting some knowledge? Do you guys have events? Do you, how, does, how does that look for you guys as far as oh, oh, definitely. getting the word out there? There's, there's many outlets, but um, the main thing will be to contact us. Um, you can go on our website, www.israelunite.org. Okay. Can you just repeat that for me, please? Uh, Israel Unite dot org. Perfect. Just want to make sure they got it right. Yes, yes. <laughs> And then from you go on there, you can, you know, there's contacts and you can go, doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in Canada, America, wherever you are, there's a contact list. You just find where you are, wherever you're from, and there'll be a contact number you get in contact with. And hopefully, you know, we have some place where you can come in. We have um, churches or schools, we call them, where you can come a place of learning so you can come in, get this understanding and congregate, start applying the scriptures of the Bible and not, you know, being led into whatever things that the world is teaching us. And that's just the process right there. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely you can also uh, see us and watch the videos on YouTube. Some people might, you know, they want to learn some so, some things first. Go, You can go on YouTube. We have, you know, IUIC Montreal page, IUIC Ottawa, IUIC Toronto. Nice, nice. You know, right. if we're, we're talking about Canada. Um, we have these uh, different outlets that you can go on, watch a lot of videos. Cause we teach a lot of. We go out in the street and we, you know, we do a lot of street teaching. And are there a lot of events you guys do too, where um, people can come and, and hear you speak and hear you share? And as far in in Canada, we're working on the events. Okay. Definitely, but you know, a lot of you can just catch us. You could you you, you can catch us outside for the most part. You know, we out there trying to do live and direct, baby. Live and direct. All right. So watch this. Read that real quick. Zechariah 11 and 4. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 4. Thus say the Lord God. Sorry. Thus say the Lord my God. Feed the flock of the slaughtered. Feed the flock of the slaughtered. Who is out there getting slaughtered on these streets? Mm -hmm. Black people. Mm -hmm. We getting slaughtered by the police. We getting, we, we're slaughtering each other. Right. Black on black crime. The Bible says feed the flock of the slaughtered. How do we feed the flock of the slaughtered? We have to give them the, the word of God. Un unadulterated, right? Raw, pure, as it is written. You understand what I'm saying? Go right. ahead. Watch this. Verse five. Whose possessors slay them? Whose possessors slay them? Who's, who? Who are the possessors and who are the possessed? We are the possessed because if I ask you what's your last name, you says I believe Smith, right? right. Even just by our, life, our last name, it shows our history of how we were possessed. By the slave master, That's right. by the possessors, and out to till this day, you understand? Yeah, we're still, we're still, uh, we're still the possessed, and they're the possessors. But watch this. It says, "Whose possessors slay them?" Watch this, and hold themselves not guilty. Whatever. That's how they get off. You understand? That's All how. Right. That's how they get off. We. Uh, I, I remember. I think you were hold playing. Hold themselves not guilty. Yeah, they hold themselves because they they're the ones who make the laws. Man. You understand what I'm saying? So it's pretty much, you know, you're kind of like in the trick bag. Yeah, you understand? Right. The, the right. system is like the trick bag. So they make the laws, then they kill us, 
And when we go to court, nine times out of ten, not guilty. That's right. When we go on the streets and we show these things to our people, now they start to have a spiritual connect where it's like, wait, hold up, I never knew the Bible said that. All I, I go to church, all I hear is John 3.16. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So now they, the, the, the same scriptures that the slaves were, were here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Back on the plantation to keep them asleep, keep them docile, so on and so forth. You know what I mean? So, you know, to, just to uh, turn you back on, off, off what Officer Tobias said, right. when these things happen, we out there. You understand? We got boots on the ground to show our people this is why these things are happening. This is why COVID is happening. This is why Ukraine and Russia, you know, this... All these things are happening for God's people's sake, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. Because that's 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 all plays a part within what God said is going to happen for them to be delivered. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, go back to, I, uh, to Deuteronomy 28. Because again, what we're reading, we're reading the curses that, again, remember my, my question. Mm -hmm. Who do these curses identify? You understand? Now, we, we read the yokes of iron on our necks, right? Now let, this is the one that brought me in, you know, and a lot of people. Okay, this is where it started for you. This is this is where it started for me. Okay, and I know this is where it started for a lot of people as well. You understand? Verse sixty-eight, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, verse sixty-eight, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt there, whole at uh, Exodus twenty and two, real, real quick, like uh, we were uh, showing earlier, has to be precept upon precept. The children of Israel, what was their social status in Egypt? They were slaves. Egypt, what we just read in verse 68, is synonymous for something. We're going to find out what. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 20, sorry, Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the what? Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous to house of bondage, meaning what? Slavery, servitude. Yeah. So now when we go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord shall bring thee mm -hmm. into into bondage, into again. bondage again, right. into slavery again. Let's see how. Right. With ships. With what? With ships. With ships. Jeez. With ships. When we came out of Egypt, we walked. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We walked. Try to walk now to Egypt. You won't be able to do that yeah, because do they that. built something called the, the Suez Canal right. to try to separate the land of Israel from the actual landmass of what we call today Africa. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Israel originally was in Africa. But now they build the Suez Canal. So now when you're thinking about Israel, you're not thinking about Africa. You understand what I'm saying? You're not thinking about black people. You say right. the Middle East. Even that term, the Middle East, is a term that was invented in the late 1800s. What was, if there's the Middle East, where's the Middle West? Right. You understand what I'm saying? There's right. no Middle... All these things was uh, implemented and designed in order to keep us asleep so that we will never find out the truth that we are the children of Israel. That's right. Read that, read that from the top again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Go ahead. That's the transatlantic slave yeah. trade. Go ahead. Yeah. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning our homeland of Jerusalem, we wouldn't be able to see it again. Go ahead. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And there, wherever those slave ships dock, Canada, America, Jamaica, Haiti, the Caribbeans, South America, wherever those slave ships docked, what, what would happen? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. We will be sold unto our enemies. Go ahead. For bondmen. Slave men. And bond women. And slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. The word buy there is an old quick word from old English meaning no man will be able to redeem you. Mm. The only man that can redeem mm. us is Jesus Christ. That's right. A black man. Yeah, the law. Yes. A black man with, yes. with, with white woolly hair. That's I know some people, some of our people, when we say that, they get offended. Yeah. You got to understand this, the, the, the psyche of the slave. That's right. It's like you're rejecting your own salvation. Yeah. It's good. Remember we, the first scripture that we read that we, through comfort and patience, uh, patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. Guess what? It gives us hope to know that Jesus Christ is black. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. It, it gives it gives me Trust hope me. to know that the, the Most High God is mm -hmm. black, mm -hmm. and to, and that I can actually read it in the Scriptures. You know what? L let's read that. Go to Revelation chapter one and verse uh, and, and verse uh, start at verse one, and I'm going to show you that in history, before the Renaissance era, because the Renaissance era, which was what four in the late uh, I mean mid 1400s, you understand? They started repainting those images 
of Christ as Caucasian. They started repainting those images of Christ as white. Mm. But prior to that, everywhere where we were, we were in Europe, we were in Spain, we were in, uh, in Germany, we left images. And those images, we always painted them as black. Because we, under we understood that the people in the Bible, that was our people. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And, I, and, I, and I know we got like, what, uh, 17 minutes? I'm going to try to rush through this quick so I can show you some of that stuff. Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. So this is the, re the revelation that Christ gave to John the Revelator so that his servants might know things that are going to happen in the future. And some of them things is, is actually happening today. Jump down to verse 14. The, uh, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Read that again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Christ had white woolly hair. So color of his hair, white. Texture of his hair, woolly. Mm. Go ahead. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he drank wine in moderation. Mm. You know when black people drink alcohol, the, right. white, the white of our eyes get, you know what I'm saying, mm. they get red or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to Christ. The prophecy said his eyes would be red with wine. So he drank wine. His first miracle, he turned water into what? He turned water into yeah. wine. Go ahead. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. Encyclopedia. Sorry. Yeah. His feet like what? And his feet like unto fine brass. Fine brass. Just like in the, in the uh, Olympics, you have the gold medal, you have the uh, silver medal, and then you have the bronze medal. That's the color of brass. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they what? As if they burned in a furnace. So anything you put in the furnace, what color is it going to come out? Anything that you burn in the furnace is going to come out black. That's right. So Christ's feet look like it was burnt in a furnace. Now remember, we read, we read his white, uh, his uh, white as snow, and uh, like, sorry, read that, read that part again. Verse fourteen. About his hair. Verse fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So watch this. This is an old encyclopedia, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Britannica World Language edition of Funk uh, and Bagnall's New Practical Standard Dictionary. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these books, right? Remember, we could not read, we could not write. What uh, so-called white people, what they were doing, they were exchanging information in those books about who it is that they have in slavery. Because in order for you to keep a people as, as slave, mm -hmm. you got to know who they are. You got to know what makes them tick, what That's makes right. them cry. You got to have a, 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 a rule of thumb, a book of knowledge about who these people are. Yeah. So when they were exchanging those information, they were very, very loose with the truth. Because they had no fear of us picking up the books and, and reading them. So now, let's go to the definition of Negro. Right there. Read the definition of Negro. All uh, right. Right here. Yeah, read that. Okay. Negro, a noun. One belonging to the primary Negroid stock. Go ahead. And of or black race of mankind. Go ahead. Specifically, one belonging to the tribes inhabiting the Congo and Sudan <coughs> regions of Africa. Go ahead. Typified. By brown or black skins. Mm -hmm. Woolly hair. What kind of hair? Woolly hair. What kind of hair? Woolly hair. So that's one thing that they know. The texture of our hair, which they now they say, we, we use those negative terms, nappy. Right, right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, we use all kinds of negative terms. Sometimes we perm our hair. We want to bleach our skin. The, they knew that the, the proper term for our hair texture is woolly. Woolly, right. You understand? Woolly. And that's what we just read out of the Bible. That yeah. Christ had white woolly hair. You understand what I'm saying? So, there's a lot of things that they wrote in those books where, get the old books, not the new ones. The yeah, old books the old with the old scholars right. that, you know, they spoke a lot of things, again, to keep information circulating among themselves. So now today, we have to, you know what I'm saying, uh, start buying these books. Some of them are like, the prices are like in the thousands, you know what I'm saying? Some of them, some are going to try to show you. Now go to, the, to mo, the Most High God, Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. Bring it up. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. For people that say, nobody knows God. Right. They will say, nobody knows, nobody, nobody's seen Jesus. 
We just read the, the, the description of Jesus Christ <laughs> right. out of the Bible. This is the King James 1611 Bible. Come on. Now we're going to read the, def, the, the description of the Most High God, the creator of the heaven and earth. Read. The book of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. So Daniel said, I beheld till the kingdoms were cast down. Yeah. Because when Christ returns, when, when the Most High God establishes his kingdom on earth, ain't going to be no joint rulership with Justin Trudeau. It ain't going to be no joint rulership okay. with Joe Biden. Yeah. It ain't going to be no joint rulership with uh, my coin. No. When, when God touched, uh, touched the earth, everything stops. That's right. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. So God had a garment, meaning clothing. In order for you to have a garment, you need to have a body. Mm. So is God a spirit? Yes, he's a spirit. But guess what? He got a body. There you go. go ahead. And the hair of his head. And the what? And the hair of his head. And the hair of God's head. Go ahead. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. So for my sisters out here. Right. My sisters that are out there, Tell them, please. guess what? Tell them, Your please. God has wool, pure wool hair. Yes. That's right. Pure so, wool hair. So stop it. Be proud of that. <laughs> Be proud of Be that. Be proud of Just that. Stop it now. Stop all the blonding. Stop, stop all stop the, the perming. You put all these chemicals. Some yes. of them, some of you sisters, you got stop alopecia. It. Listen. Natural, beautiful. Natural, beautiful hair. Because we were, God said he created us in his image. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? God is black. Christ is black. We're black. You understand? So now, how, how is that not good news? Yeah, right. I, or some of our own people are going to reject that and be like, no, that's racist. No, no, no. I don't know. Don't, don't come great, here with that's that. That's great news. That's great news. That's great you understand news. what I'm saying? Now watch this. Let, let's uh, go to Jeremiah 14 and 2. And let me uh, start bringing some of these books. So I just want to give you guys a heads up. We got about we can wrap this up in about three minutes. Three minutes? Okay, I still cool, cool. Play, uh, no problem. One, one one piece of music tonight. No problem. Well, you know you're you know you you're the eyes of the audience. You see right. what I'm saying? So this book right here, you know, what I'm saying you can testify as to what what you're seeing. It's called Early Spanish Manuscript Illumination mm -hmm. because our people we used to be in Spain. You understand? Uh, the Jews were in Spain. The Black Jews were in Spain. You understand? So those are like some of the images. You understand? That's that they true. left. Now, this, this is all before, you know, the Renaissance era. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This right here, uh, this is Christ. Christ in the middle. You have the angels surrounding him. Uh, do give, you, give you guys have these books on your site uh, as little reference points or, or suggestions? Um, um, IUIC, Dark Ages. Uh, yes, IUIC. IUIC. If you go on Facebook, uh, it's, there's IUIC. Dark Ages. Okay. You know I think it's important for people to know these books and to know where they can just go take a look at them. And yes, sir. Get most the names, definitely. Get the authors and then go get them. Most definitely. This one here is called Russian Icons. Right. Because we used to be in Russia as well. You understand? Here you got Christ. Look at this. Christ in the middle. Yes, you know why. Christ in the middle right here. Yeah. With the 12 apostles. You understand? You have all, all kinds of imagery. And what's, what's this one called again? Russian icon. Russian icon. If you if you go and try to Google that right now to see how much that is, they know, they know that we don't read books. Right. You know what I'm saying? We spend our money on what sneakers, video games, whatever. Mm -hmm. They know that we, we as a people they've destroyed us so much we don't have much interest in books. But guess what? We have our history in these books, and Black history is not something that you can just relegate to the, the shortest month of uh, of the year. They give us the shortest month of the year, and like, yeah, that, that was Black History, yeah, Black yeah. History Month. Nah, yeah. to hell with Black History is every day, and it's every everywhere. Day. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. This what's one right this, here. Which one's this one? This one is called the Icon. Sorry. It's called the Icon. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, this one. Right there. Read that. Read that. Read Jeremiah 14, Je verse 2. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. <laughs> Judah morning. And the gates thereof languish. The real Jews are in mourning. Go ahead. They are black unto the ground. What color are the Jews? They are black unto the ground. The Jews are black just like the ground. The ground that Adam was made from. Yeah. The dust of the ground. Right here, what do we got? We got Moses. You see what I'm saying? But guess what? God's spirit is back in the earth. Trust me. You understand? God's spirit is back in the earth for our people to wake up. You understand? Like, this is good news. That's why Christ said, I came to the lost sheep. 
of the house of Israel. We're lost as a people. Yeah. You understand? And the knowledge is out there, and the prophets of God are out there. Look us up. Israel united in Christ. Go. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Just to wrap up, you have, you have another message? I'm just, just you know, grateful to be on here. Like I said, um, reach out to us, IsraelUnite.org. Yes, let them know, please. Get in contact, learn your heritage, learn your history, and let's get ourselves right so we can make it out of this captivity, everyone. Thank right. you all for the time, and, you know, just have a blessed Sabbath. Stay in the spirit. Uh, shalom, Mosai, and Christ bless you all. Yeah. Israel United in Christ, they gave you the information. Shout them out. Reach out. It's time, to, it's time to rise above, y'all. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.